Hello, welcome to Bringing Back Nature. I'm your host, Courtney Bondar. On today's show, we will give you a glimpse at Wendell Park in Franklin, Wisconsin, and two of their world-renowned facilities, the Ware Nature Center and the Burner Botanical Gardens. Later, we will meet with Wendell Park naturalist Howard April to give us a glimpse at what he does at the park, along with a sneak peek at the species that reside there. But first, we will hear from Beverly Bryant, an interpretive naturalist at the Ware Nature Center. She'll give us a little more about Wendell's history and how the Nature Center contributes to not only the community in Franklin, but Milwaukee as a whole. The park has um, a great history. Um, the land was purchased back in the 1920s by the Milwaukee County Parks Commission. Alfred Berner was the first landscape architect for Milwaukee County Parks and he kind of designed everything that you see today. Uh, it was just open fields and, and woods before that. So when the Great Depression hit in, in the late 20s, early 1930s, uh, the parks really benefited from a national program called the Civilian Conservation Corps. So it's funded by the federal government and there was actually a, a residential camp. There was a camp with barracks and trucks and all the uh, equipment to, to manage a, a pretty large group of men who came up from Chicago, actually. Um, young men who were unemployed during the Great Depression and they put them to work. They built all the roads, they channeled streams, created all the lagoons, including Ware Nature Center's lake and our waterfall. Much of what we see today is, is entirely from their efforts in the 1930s and early 1940s. That was the early history of the parks and then it's just sort of grown over time um, to include, you know, within the 600 acres we have a world-renowned botanical gardens, um, we have a nationally recognized nature center, we also have a, a PGA approved, you know, gold level golf course in Whitnall Golf, um, and everything from cross country to archery to sledding hills to lots of areas now for mountain biking and other kinds of recreation. We have a, a prairie, a forest, a wetland, a pond, a, a waterfall all within a two mile walk. You know that's really unique within the Milwaukee par Park System and we do have a great variety of things in the Milwaukee County Parks but like I said we, we call ourselves the crown gem. Whitnell Park is the crown gem. Well, the Nature Center has, it was always originally part of the plan back in the 1930s. Um, we have an amphitheater here and the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, did put the foundation wall in place back in the 1930s. But it took until um, the 19, early 1970s for the center to really actually develop as a, as a physical building and a whole programmatic center. So that initial purpose was to provide a place where people of all ages can come learn about nature, have direct experiences with nature, learn to love nature, because we feel really strongly that it takes folks who care to take action, to take stewardship action. Um, so that's really been our, our purpose from the very beginning, is to combine nature education, direct experience, opportunities for people to volunteer and do stewardship, to be feel empowered, and to feel that connection and love to the land. My next class is about nighttime, so we're going to turn off the lights and pretend we're in the dark and learn about nighttime animals. We have classes for four to six year olds called Nature Knots. Um, we have classes for families to come to called the Nature Wizard. And then for field trips, we offer a whole wide variety of things. Like in wintertime, we would do animal tracking. We have um, particular field trips that focus on a part of the nature here, so maybe pond study ecology, ecosystems, we have classes in geology about the glacial history, the rocks and minerals of the area, so a wide diversity of things um, and we work directly with school districts to try to make sure that our, our field trips fit within their curriculum so we support what the classrooms are doing. Currently we have over 300 active volunteers here at Ware putting in thousands and thousands of hours of volunteer time. 
equivalent of many full-time employees. Um, and they do everything. They do everything from putting the chips that people walk on on those trails, to keeping our fences, keeping the trails in good condition, helping us do natural areas things like removing invasive plants, planting new things that are of value, um, to helping to teach the students when they come on field trips, to um, helping us run these big special events and, and, and program pieces that we have and everything in between. We want people to feel welcome here, uh, of all backgrounds and all abilities, and we're trying to work towards that. Um, one of the things that has been true of the city of Milwaukee, the, the county of Milwaukee, is that we're not always the most equitable place, that people don't feel like they have access to resources, and so we are working towards trying to find better ways and for people to know that this is a place for everybody. It's really interesting to see what the Park and Nature Center offers to Milwaukee residents. And joining me now is naturalist Howard April to discuss his role at the park. Howard, how are you doing today? And it's very nice to see you. Very well. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, thank you. So what is a naturalist and why did you want to become one? A naturalist, very simply, is someone that studies nature. And uh, it's one of the best jobs in the entire world because mm -hmm. as a naturalist at Ware Nature Center, I get to teach people and share the natural world and our connection to nature and science and how it's all connected. And it really began when I went out to Ware Nature Center as a youngster. My family and my grandfather would take me out to Ware Nature Center. So I've been literally going to Ware Nature Center for, oh gosh, about 45 years now. Wow. So that's what made you pick Whitnell to work at, correct? The whole nostalgia behind. <laughs> well, it's certainly appropriate that I, yeah. that I was there. Um, you know, it, but it has special meaning for me when I go to work every day because, you know, this is the place where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's where I learned about nature. It's where I learned about science. And to be able to take that and share that with the public really is a privilege. Now, as a naturalist, uh, my duties actually take many different forms. So, for instance, a lot of what I do is I develop and implement programs, all the way starting from little kids, four-year-olds, all the way up through grade school, high school, college, adult, um, and families, and everything in, in between. So we, I develop programs that are appropriate uh, for whatever particular audience might be joining us. It's really about meeting people where they're at. We want people to be able to enjoy nature where they're at and to enjoy it in a safe place and in, a, in a, just an absolutely remarkable little bit of Milwaukee County. Of course. So what kind of animals do you work with at Wendell Park? Could you explain a little bit? Sure. Well, one of the things that I do is I get to take care of our live animal collection. So we have a variety of live animals. Um, they're not pets, they are what we call our animal ambassadors. So that means that uh, their job is to go out into the community, to retirement communities, schools, um, and to take their message out to them. We live in a very urban environment, and the goal between with our live animals is to make them accessible to the general public, all the way from the little ones all the way up to, to adults. Of course. And how do you think the community benefits from both uh, Whitnell and the Ware Nature Center? Well, it, metropolitan area has about one and a half million people. And uh, if there's anything that the last couple of years uh, have told us is that people really need and they want access to outdoor green space mm -hmm. and open space. So having a 220-acre nature center within the 660-acre Whitnell Park it's really important. It gives people an opportunity to enjoy nature uh, and to see a variety of different animals and plant life and ecological communities literally 15 minutes from downtown Milwaukee. Of course. And what kind of events do you guys put on um, at the Nature Center or Wilno Park? We like to call Wear Nature Center a place for all seasons, a mm -hmm. place for everyone. So we offer year-round programming. So for instance, in the fall we have our bug day, uh, we have winter festivals, we have um, a maple sugar event in the springtime to talk about our connection to the maple syrup heritage of Wisconsin. We literally have programs every single month for all different ages and all different backgrounds. Well, great. Thank you so much, Howard, for sharing all this wonderful information and getting some insight on the Wear Nature Center and Wendell Park and your job especially. It was great seeing you and looking forward to hearing all this information about the animals as well. 
Now let's take a look at another Whitnall Park facility, the Burner Botanical Gardens. The gardens director, Shirley Walzak, gives us an overview of the facility and what it all contributes to Whitnall Park. The history of the gardens is quite exciting. Um, it was started really in the early 1900s with Charles Whitnell, who was the commissioner uh, for the park system or part of Milwaukee County. And he purchased, or he had this vision for a jeweled necklace, a green necklace to go around the, the county of Milwaukee. So he, in the early 1900s, purchased land around Milwaukee County. And part of it was Whitnell Park, um, which later became part of us, part of Whitnell became the Burner Botanical Gardens. Botanical Gardens at the park provides many opportunities for relaxation, education. The, we offer a lot of adult education programs uh, and children's education programs through our Friends of Burner Botanical Gardens who run our educational program. We also have different displays out in the garden so people can see and part of our mission is to show people of southeastern Wisconsin what they can grow in their own yards and what's the possibilities. The Friends of Burner Botanical Gardens were established in the mid-80s as a support group for Burner Botanical Gardens and they help raise money to help support the gardens. They also um, do our adult education and children's education program and so they reach out through the different school districts in Milwaukee County and beyond. One of the unique things we also offer at the gardens is weddings so you can get married out here. You can have special events out here. The weddings are really spectacular because they're all each unique and different and they're each their own event. So we try to work with the brides and the grooms and try to make their day special. The garden showcases by seasons um, different opportunities. In April, May, we have our early spring blooms, our tulip displays, daffodils, the crab apples, which we were known for the crab apple collection, um, as well as other just spring ephemerals that are coming up out of the ground. The trial garden, which is a place where people can see what the newest things are coming out in the market and what we are trialing. Um, that's for future gardens, future growing. So our gift shop provides a lot of art and there are really a lot of unique pieces. There's some wonderful woodworking pieces. There's also a lot of um, jewelry um, and it's all done by the local, local artists in the area. The importance for the community is it's a place to come and learn. It's a place to come and relax. It's a place to explore. Um, it's a place to get young people involved with outdoor nature and get them away from the social media and the videos and the everything. Just to come and have peace and quiet and also pick something up and, and learn from what we have out here. Now let's take a closer look at the species of Whitnall. So Howard, what do you have for us today? Well, I'm very pleased to have four different species of animals that you can find in Southeast Wisconsin and in Whitnall Park. Quick note, all of our, our animals here, these are just the travel cages. They have very large uh, ecosystem appropriate cages and enclosures at the Nature Center. Mm -hmm. So. Our animals here, they're animal ambassadors, so they actually go out to the community to teach people about nature and science and the creatures with which we share our world. Let's meet some of them very briefly. This guy right here, who's trying to be an escape artist, oh, I can see. he is a common or eastern garter snake. Now, the reason we have a snake like him is because there are many people that have never seen one of the most common animals in all of southeast Wisconsin, the common garter snake. Mm -hmm. Now, people take a look at these guys and they might say, oh, you know, they're so tiny, there's lots of things that might want to eat them, and that's true. But all of the animals here have adaptations that help them survive. For instance, Stripes the garter snake here, if you were to pick up, a, he's very gentle because he works with people every day. Mm -hmm. If you were outside in the grass and you caught one and picked one up, chances are he would either bite you or out of his back end here, called the cloaca, he would emit a combination of urine and feces called musk. 
that would smell and taste really bad. So that means if a fox or a raccoon was to pick them up, they would get a nasty experience in their mouth, they would drop the snake, and they're smart enough to know that the next time I pick up a snake, I'm, it won't be pleasant. So it's a pretty amazing adaptation. That's really cool. Over here, we have the common, or the American toad. And these guys, like, like their name suggests, they are very, very common. Mm -hmm. And what these guys do, whoop. <laughs> Trying to escape. These guys have a great adaptation as well. If you take a look behind their, behind their eyes, they have two big bumps. Those are actually called glands. Oh, okay. And in those glands is a liquid. If a fox or a raccoon was to pick one up, penetrate those glands, once again, they would get a really nasty taste in their mouth and they would more than likely drop the toad. The toad might live, another, to, live to fight another day. Mm -hmm. So that's another example as to how they're able to, able to survive. Of course. And of course, these guys are very, very active. Let's take a look over here. This right here is a tiger salamander. And what you're looking at there, believe it or not, is the largest terrestrial salamander on planet Earth. Salamanders like people. They come in all different sizes, shapes, uh, and appearances. And this guy that you're looking at right here is found in southeast Wisconsin. And they're called the tiger salamander because you know what they eat? Pretty much anything they want. Really? If it fits into their mouth, they're going to eat it. Salamanders are really interesting in that they actually require two different habitats. They require a, a wetland or a body of water in order for them to have their youngsters, just like frogs and toads, but then they spend most of their lives up on, up on the land. Mm -hmm. And then this little guy right here. Oh, that's my favorite one of all. <laughs> yeah, that is our tree frog. And um, he's actually a, a rescue. Someone found him uh, in a plant that they brought into their house and they didn't discover him until November and the snow had, had started falling. So we decided to foster him at Ware Nature Center and he's actually become a part of the, the animal ambassador team. Oh, okay. Tree frogs are really interesting. Yes, they actually do live in trees and they have little suction cups on the tips of their, of their fingers that helps them climb up and down trees. Mm -hmm. They're actually fairly common. We just don't see them a whole lot because like many animals, they're very shy and they're very reclusive and they pretty much stick to themselves. Yeah, of course. So what is your favorite animal that you've gotten so far at the <laughs> nature center? Well, I have to admit, I like all of them. I know that's probably not the best answer, but I have to admit, I kind of lean towards uh, our garter snake here. And the reason I kind of lean towards him is because he's actually, this particular snake is just so gentle and so good with kids. Yeah. And that is not something that you get all the time. People think ant snakes are just stimulus response, mm -hmm. but they're really not. They actually have, there is a variety of, of personality amongst individuals of the same species. He is by far the most mellow, zen garter snake I've ever worked with. Really? Which makes them perfect for introducing him to people that might be a little apprehensive about meeting mm -hmm. snakes or with little children. Yeah, because I was going to say, because little kids, you know, they kind of are a little squeamish, especially when it comes to animals like this, but obviously he looks very, very chill, so. He's very calm, and that's one of the things that all of these animals have in common. They're, we handle them regularly, they're very, very calm, and just like with, with the garter snake, we try and use him to introduce uh, nature and animals to people. We do the same thing with all these other, other animals. Remember, you know, I had the opportunity to grow up with wildlife all the time where I grew up, but not everyone has that opportunity. Yeah. So all of these animals are intended to help introduce people, meet people where they're at, and introduce them in a comfortable, non-threatening way so that eventually they not only are aware of the wildlife, mm -hmm. but they have appreciation for them as well. Exactly, and that's what I was going to get at too, is the appreciation for nature, because I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily understand unless they get close up and involved and this is a great way to really get that in the community and the community to these wonderful animals because I can tell you I've seen garden snakes I've seen um, toes I've seen salamanders but salamander is not like this this is this one's very interesting <laughs> and tree frogs too I mean this is all wonderful education and um, it really just draws together the knowledge that you want to communicate to the community as well 
Exactly, and that's one of the great things about Milwaukee County Parks. You know, we do conservation, education, and recreation. Mm -hmm. And having wildlife and having these animal ambassadors to be able to go out into the community and to teach people about what they have, it's really important because it gives people uh, an opportunity to learn what is in their own backyard. Yeah. You know, we today we face many environmental challenges as a society, and one of the first steps to addressing that is to have an environmentally literate population. Yes. And having live animals like this and having programs at Ware Nature Center, the Burner Botanical Gardens, and in all of Milwaukee County Parks, that's all part of the part of towards the effort of helping people understand the natural world, have a greater appreciation for it, and ultimately take action to uh, protecting our nat natural world, both for now and for those that come after us. Of course, and that really brings an impact to the community and also, you know, just the education system there too and bringing forth all these aspects. And I really, myself, I mean, I'm appreciating all this too. I've learned things from you today that I honestly didn't know and learning each about these different species has been a wondrous thing, honestly. And I'm, thank you very much for teaching me all about this and teaching all of us here. And I honestly can say out of all these, that tree frog though, he will <laughs> always be my favorite. He was the cutest little thing and he had his little suction cups right on the, uh, the side of the, the um, plastic there. I thought that was so cute. So uh, now I get to go home and tell my little sister, like, I got to play with <laughs> animals today. <laughs> Well, we hope you come out and visit us on the trails and all of your viewers as well. You know, we're Nature Center. We're, uh, the grounds are open 365 days out of the year. We really want to be a place for all seasons and a place for everyone because while I work at the park, I take care of the park, Whitnall Park belongs to the entire community. Definitely, and I feel like a lot of people too bring their family, their friends, even like um, events too. I see a lot of Whitnall Park, so it's a one place the community can share and the community can enjoy. And I find myself going through the trails, you know, really understanding nature and seeing the park as it is, because that is the beauty of it all: is understanding and appreciating um, the environmental aspects of Whitnell Park. So I bet you must be very ecstatic to work there every day, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know if I was um, in that place, it would be a substantial um, place to work and really wake up and be like, I get to be out in nature, I get to see animals, I get to interact with them. It's very much a um, enlightening experience and if it's something that I get to enjoy in my lifetime like you, I but it's going to be a memory I'll never forget. It's a privilege to serve as a steward of, mm -hmm. uh, of the park. Yeah. And, and uh, we hope to see you out on the trail soon. Of course. And do you mind if I like... Oh, of bloom? course. <laughs> of course. All right. You ready? Oh, sure. Look oh, at that. Okay. That is one gentle snake. He remember, is very gentle. For the folks watching at home, <laughs> if you pick up a garter snake in the grass, they are not going to be as cooperative yeah. as, as this, this guy here. I can imagine, my goodness. And uh, this particular snake, he's a male. There actually mm -hmm. is a way to tell male from female by looking at their tail. Mm -hmm. And uh, this little opening right there, that's called their cloaca. And basically with males, it tends to uh, be thicker right past the tail. Yeah. Females, it tends to get really, really skinny oh. really quick. Okay. So uh, for those of you, for those out there that are interested in being able to tell gender between <laughs> male and female garter snakes, interesting thing about garter snakes, if you do see them though, they are perfectly harmless. You do not mm -hmm. have to be afraid of them. If you have them in your yard, you don't have to be afraid. They're not going to harm you, your kids, your pets. Uh, if you do see them, you can just take pride in knowing you have a little bit of cool part of nature. Of uh, course. Right under your nose there. Aww. Well, he is so sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much for letting me hold them and, you know, get to show our audience there. <laughs> okay. Come here, buddy. <laughs> So other than that, I want to thank you so much for showing us and really getting to explain, you know, all the aspects of nature and the Windmill Park and these animals, too, in general. So thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Howard, for showing us all these wonderful animals and really getting to see what's in Whitnell Park. And you may get to see some of these in your own backyard. Next time you're at a local park, remember how much it has to offer. Nature benef can benefit you through your physical and mental well-being in so many different ways. Thank you for tuning in to this installment of Bringing Back Nature. This is Courtney Bondar wishing you happy trails.